Um, let's talk about conservatism mm. briefly. <laughs> Hopefully we talk about it a lot. Paul Kelly in The Australian had an article saying conservatism is in crisis and this is based on uh, what's happening in Britain. I'll be talking about that later at 10 o'clock um, with Liz Truss. Uh, but uh, are conservatives in crisis? We've seen Susan Lay come out this week uh, talking about the Teals and the need for the coalition to fight back against the Teals. What does this mean, James? Did, does this mean she's saying that the coalition needs to become more teal-coloured? No, or does it mean they should become away from the Teals? Well, I don't mm. think it's so much about the fight, you know, over the internal ideology. I mean, the idea that conservatism is in crisis, I think, is a little bit of a misnomer, with all due respect to Paul Kelly, because I think the problem is that not so much the conservatives in, in crisis, but that conservatives haven't been able to, you know, put in the in the top roles uh, of their parties. So, you know, Liz Truss, who you're going to speak about very shortly, you know, this is somebody with very sort of green left, liberal Democrat, British roots. You know, she was an anti-Thatcher, pro-environment, pro-Remain uh, type. You know, and so you know the idea to say that she's an example of conservatism in crisis, I think, is a bit of a misnomer. Now, as far well, as this... it is in the sense that we have people who are not real conservatives, we've got imposters who are leading the conservative movement. Yeah, I think that's the, the, the crisis is yeah, that, that is exactly entirely the different to what's argued in this article, I've got to say, which goes in all sorts of weird directions, in, in my opinion. But there's the, the crisis in, in this country is that the conservatives don't know what they stand for and who they are. They've become so enamoured with being a broad church that mm. they well, they've actually that, lost their ideology that's and the their point. point of difference. That's the key yeah. point. And it's the bedwetters who have caused the problems in Britain. Uh, you've seen when, wherever conservatives stand up for strong conservative values, like in Italy... Uh, they win. ..like in America under Trump... Uh, they Sweden. Will win. They will win. Sweden. Um, Sweden. I mean, the, the, the fact... Uh, Italy's not that much of a surprise, but... Green, left, borderline socialist yeah, Sweden electing a centre-right coalition. I mean, you're telling me conservatism yeah, what's the, is in crisis? What's the, what, but, you know, the word is crisis. Crisis is the key word to this. Not that conservatism is in crisis, but that conservatives get brought in when things get so <laughs> yeah. bad that there is, is a crisis. That's what out. happened in Sweden. That's what happened in Italy. That's what happened in the U.S. under Trump, post-Obama. Um, but and that's what's going to happen again in the US. And, and that is. will happen again in the US. And that's what will have to happen. I am very sad to say, I fear, in Australia, that Australia is going to have to go so far down the road of green lunacy, economic dislocation, self-impoverishment as a result of all these policies. And then who gets called in to clean up the mess? Conservatives. Mm -hmm. And if you take the nationals as a microcosm, and we can ask Matt about this in a second, but... Uh, you know, I was pleased to hear David Littleproud coming out and saying, oh, you can't cut methane like this. It will, um, you know, it'll be, it, it's the end of the Aussie barbecue. Well, sorry, David Littleproud, this is just simply an extension of you embracing net zero. Exactly. It always was. Mm. So there's no point now. And this is what, uh, unfortunately, the bedwetters within the coalition and uh, the Nats do all the time. After the horse has bolted, they go, oh... We shouldn't That's have it. done that. No, no, no. We did tell you at the time, don't open that stable door because you will ruin it for yourselves as well as for us. As, as Matt Canavan, who we're going to speak to shortly, told us on Sunday morning after the election that they lost, which we knew they were going to lose, mm. they, the electorate hasn't changed. No. It's the Liberal Party that changed. Three years ago, they fought the climate change election and, and won. they won the... Un winnable election, no one thought they could win that one because they prioritised pricing and reliability over emissions. Exactly. This time around, they signed up to net zero. They had no argument. Cost of living was the biggest policy uh, area that people cared about. And the Liberals had nothing different to offer that, that was uh, compelling. And they lost.